Exploring the Future Why Future? First, close your eyes and imagine this. One day you open the door and you find the outside world familiar yet strange. You take a look around and find yourself in a familiar place. The only difference being this place has been covered with futuristic buildings and objects. Yes, you've traveled forward in time. Like many time travelers, you made it to the future. It's just that you aren't the only person in this world. There are other time travelers here just like you. How do you plan to survive in a world like this? All right, now open your eyes. PUBG Mobile has brought you to the futuristic Erangel. Let's embark on this future journey together. Actually, this story is where PUBG Mobile version 1.5 originated. One day, our creative team leader asked us a very interesting question. If you traveled back in time one day, how would you survive? All kinds of answers were given. Then the team leader asked a second question. If you find yourself having traveled to the future one day, how would you survive? Nobody made a sound. Suddenly, someone said, then let's make a futuristic game. This person is none other than PUBG Mobile's producer, Rick Lee. After some time, Rick raised his own question. If PUBG Mobile became futuristic, what would it look like? While everyone was still pondering, Rick said, why don't we give it a shot? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Make it futuristic then, let's make it. It was July 26th, 2020, the day we decided to launch Project Future. PUBG Mobile has always been trying to better itself, to bring brand new features and the best battle royale experience. In the previous versions, we've tried adding zombies, more heavy power weapons, even content like runic power to enrich the game. But this time, we were even bolder. We didn't want to just slap another element or gameplay feature onto the game. Rather, we wanted to present a futuristic battle royale battleground to everyone, one which can bring about a fundamental change to the gaming experience. This includes all new futuristic items, new maps, new stages, new features, and a series of other changes. We believe that this mode will be refreshing for everyone and present everyone with an unprecedented gaming experience. Make a futuristic game. It is really a very interesting topic. We don't want to mess with the basics of PUBG Mobile. Instead, we want to build on the Battle Royale game mode and showcase a new futuristic side to PUBG Mobile. We want to see what players will do, what everyone can do to survive this futuristic errand gal, Rick said. In the early stages of this project, a question was on the mind of everyone in the studio. What does PUBG Mobile look like in the future? There's no one right answer. How the future looks like is different for everyone. After many days of discussion, we've decided to not let any subjective idea shape this futuristic world. Rather, we'd explore the future of Erangel from the perspective of an observer. There are many games on the market with a futuristic theme, but it's not easy to create a futuristic battleground that properly belongs to PUBG Mobile. We plan to develop Erangel by sticking to its original narrative design. We aren't creators, but explorers recording the gradual evolution of Erangel and features that every important area should have. Therefore, after the direction of the project has been confirmed, we didn't start modifying Erangel right away. Instead, we did a lot of research and read a lot of material to explore all the possibilities that could surface during Erangel's evolution," Lyon said. At the same time, the creative team also started on their creative work. In order to explore a futuristic Erangel, we first had to know what happened on Erangel that propelled Erangel's evolution. We didn't want to affect the classic Erangel itself, so we came up with an what-if mode. It's like you have to find the most suitable universe in an infinite number of parallel universes, and then create stories that uniquely belong to it. In Cycle 1, our story begins from this what-if mode, Marquez said. In Cycle 1, a company named Dynahex appeared in Erangel and started conducting a series of scientific research on the island. For more efficient work, Dynahex gave Erangel an overhaul. According to Erangel's original layout, 
Dynahex built six new areas that each serve a different function to best suit different business needs. Cycle One's story starts like this. We were very excited when we learned of this backstory. We combined our research results with Cycle One's story and quickly decided on the six modified areas. Jorgopol, Saznovka Military Base, Pochinki, School, Yaznaya Poliana, and Milta Power, Lionel said. The reason for these areas is that not only do the players love them, each area has its own specialty. As an established tech company, Dynahex would prioritize creating modules that are relevant to their businesses. Going back to the specialties mentioned, Dynahex decided to build a research center at the school where they'd be able to carry out their research. With the school as the core, the other roles are as follows. A security center to ensure the security of the island. A transportation hub to facilitate faster travel. A logistics center for packing and transporting manufactured goods. An automated harbor to export goods out of Erangel. And a resource center to support the state-of-the-art operation of the island. We think the changes Dynahex is making to the island are still in constant development. We don't want to hit everyone with an Erangel that has finished evolving. Because not only should players have plenty of time to get used to major changes, the familiar feeling we have of Erangel might also disappear. And that's not what we want to see. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. Hence, we divided Erangel's evolution into multiple stages with what everyone can see being the first stage," Rick said. Dynahex just finished upgrading the major buildings in the areas, but the surrounding areas have not started their renovation yet. So we can see that it is an ongoing process starting from the center and radiating outward. The priority is placed on the newly constructed buildings and further out are the buildings being upgraded and the work area for the construction crew. On the outer edges are the residential areas that have not started on their upgrade yet. The whole place thus reflects a very natural and gradual process, and it's exactly this kind of natural process that will make all the buildings in the area more complete and improve the entire gaming experience. After deciding on the six major areas, the second question was raised. How should the six areas be upgraded? How can we bring more thrilling elements to players? Let's save this topic for next time.